Greg, today, so what security precautions are now in place? Many. In fact, Joe, we've just heard a briefing of uh, involving Mike Pence and officials from the Department of Homeland Security, which has the overall coordination role, along with many, many other agencies all the way through to the Secret Service, which has a lot of responsibilities around Joe Biden on the day. Mike Pence himself will be at the Capitol for the inauguration. But they are adopting what they call somewhat euphemistically an aggressive posture, both in the security precautions that are being put in place around Washington, D.C., but also at other Capitol buildings and in messaging to the public. So they're strongly urging all Americans to stay well away from this city of Washington, D.C. and uh, to that end, they've almost completed the erection of a massive steel ring that goes all the way around the mall and around Capitol Hill itself. It stretches for probably more than four kilometres, I guess closer to five or six by, you com by the time you complete the whole circle there. And uh, if they are successful as a security operation on Wednesday, our time, they'll measure that success by almost no members of the public being anywhere near this inauguration. Of course, there always were plans for it to be somewhat unique and low key because of the pandemic, but the events of just over a week ago have really seen them amp up the security precautions. And for that matter, Joe, investigations and arrests flowing from the siege last week. We're told now that 100 people, particularly those caught on social media and in other photographs and video footage, uh, have been the first to fall in as a result of FBI and other mm. police investigations. Yeah, Greg, it's just going to be so strange on Inauguration Day, isn't it, to have ba basically no crowd there in front of Joe Biden when he's sworn in because we're used to that being such a ceremony with Obama when uh, there was uh, the huge crowds there uh, and all, all the performers there and then, then the big discussion around uh, Donald Trump's inauguration with all the controversy over the, the size of the crowd. But is there basically just going to be media there and the officials? We were up on the mall. We couldn't get, strictly speaking, inside the steel ring, but we have seen for ourselves, Joe, yeah, the arrangements for the media will be penned in in little marquees that are pushed out to both parallel sides of the mall. There are plans to infill the actual lawn area of the mall with decorative items. I'm told uh, hundreds, maybe even millions, hundreds of thousands of flags spiked into the lawn, but absolutely no people. I'm not saying they'll be arrested if they show up way, way down the mall past the Washington Monument, but they're certainly being discouraged from being there and it is impossible for them to be any further up than there. They just can't get through the steel fencing. OK, so the big news yesterday was the impeachment vote getting up in the House of Reps. What's the latest on what could happen with that process now? So all the politicians on the Hill are travelling, for the most part, home uh, for a few days break before a few of them at least might return senators next week and a few VIPs for the inauguration itself. Not too many for the reasons that we've already discussed. So Democrats aren't being really explicit about what happens next. Obviously, responsibility for the trial of Donald Trump shifts to the Senate. But on what day? Well, it doesn't even get to consider this question until Inauguration Day itself. But it does look as though it's going to be kicked further down the road so that Biden appointees can be confirmed in Senate hearings in very short order after Joe Biden is sworn in. And uh, we have Eric Solwell from California. He's a representative who was involved in presenting the case for impeachment yesterday. He's maintaining that the clear evidence was that Donald Trump did incite an insurrection. But when asked about the Senate strategy from here, he's being very coy indeed. Completely predictable that when you call people to action in that way, who are already radicalized because of the big lie the president told uh, that they would believe that they could storm the Capitol and stop our constitutional duty from being carried out. So again, I'm, I'm not going to go into trial strategy, uh, but I do think you know the the case we made 
on the floor yesterday uh, is really the case that most people understand. And Greg, has Donald Trump moved out of the White House yet? Well, speaking of keeping your cards close to your chest, Joe, uh, we don't actually know when uh, the president and Melania Trump are going to take flight and head to what we understand to be Mar-a-Lago in Florida. I think you start to get in the zone there for exercising his options through Monday and Tuesday, as he's not going to be present in any ceremonial form on the Wednesday. So we don't exactly know, and it could come with little notice when you consider all of the upheaval of the last eight days here in Washington, D.C. But after all the trouble on Capitol Hill, Donald Trump did publicly undertake to foster an orderly transition. And at least some good is being made on that word because there's now clear signs coming from around the White House that they are vacating the premises, both in the executive office building that is adjacent to the White House, but also seeing advisers like Peter Navarro starting to pack up personal uh, provisions that he would have in his own office, including a framed photograph of Donald Trump, his boss, and President Xi of China. So all the personal effects are starting to go out, as well as vast amounts of documents and other belongings to the Trump administration. So your expectation would be that all of these premises that have to be cleared will be and are on track to be by noon local time on Wednesday here, which is when Joe Biden takes that oath, Joe. And Greg, just before we leave you, we're expecting a key announcement from Joe Biden in the next few hours on the stimulus plan that he, he hopes to get started pretty soon. Uh, what can you tell us about that and the timing of that this morning? Because we might uh, listen into a bit of that. Uh, yes, I think it is more than an hour away. I, I understood it to be closer to two. Joe, I'll, I'll, I can check the timing and yeah. we'll confirm that back. Uh, yeah, its purpose, though, is to hit the ground running with a well-defined plan, which, let's face it, has been cooked up by his transition team for many, many weeks now. And it's to hit the Congress with a bigger package. So in US dollar terms, you don't go towards stimulus in this pandemic uh, short of about $900 billion to a trillion. Joe Biden's been saying all along the last batch that was passed just before Christmas was well short of the mark at Australian dollars, $1.2 trillion. So his package will be many magnitudes greater than that. And a key part of its emphasis will be getting vaccine shots in into arms. So that's giving money to the states and other health providers so that the staff can be in place, the transportation in place, the refrigeration in place. Quite obviously, the current administration, despite some pretty decent plans of its own with Operation Warp Speed, has fallen short of its own benchmarks for actual shots in arms. And Joe Biden wants to get 100 million in 100 days. So that starts with a big dollop of money. And uh, that's what he'll be outlining. OK, we'll look out for that today. Greg Jennett there in Washington.